Hey guys, welcome to TFL's Talking Trucks, and uh, you got me and Andre today. And also Jay, our producer. Yes, and Andre, this is the All Towing All the Time episode. We're going to be figuring out what's the best, not just truck, but what's the best powertrain to tow with. Is it gas? Is it diesel? Is it electric? Is it hybrid? Or is it something nobody's yet heard of? Maybe hydrogen? <laughs> Maybe hydrogen. <laughs> so, Jay, I don't know if you know this, but uh, Andre has towed every type of uh, vehicle up and down the Ike Gauntlet in the truck world. With so, every type of trailer. <laughs> every type yeah. of trailer. Uh, uh, Andre is a busy man. <laughs> so, so all those things I've just mentioned, you've done. I've never towed with a hydrogen fuel cell. We have driven one up Mount Evans. Yes, but we didn't tow. But them. not, but not towing. Yeah, we drove the Mirai up uh, Mount Evans. Yes, but we didn't. Tow so anything. let's not talk about you know the Mirai. The Mirai <laughs> in this show. <laughs> that's that's our other podcast, right? Yes, that, that's a car podcast. Yes, but we will talk about trucks and about towing. Yes, and I've got a little rant. I've got a towing rant. Is that okay? Yeah, you're gonna kick it off right there with the towing rant. Okay, no, yeah. I'll, let's begin I'll with a rant. You want, huh? to, you want me to begin with a rant? Let's start with a rant and then go to something else and then finish the rant. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, let's let's do the rant right now. All right. All right. Here's, I want to hear it. Okay. Here's my rant. Okay. Why do trailers have such crappy tires, <laughs> and why do you have to always like uh, lubricate the ball bearings? You know, I feel like I'm in. <laughs> I feel like I'm in the 1900s when it comes to trailers, right? <laughs> There's so much freaking maintenance on a trailer, yes. right? Yeah. The, the, the oh. tires are like rated to like 14 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and the wheel bearings must be oiled and greased every 10 miles. Every 10 miles. <laughs> Why? Well, how do we go from like, you know, the Ford Lightning and the Cybertruck to the thing that they're towing being from 1902? How, how did that happen, dude? Explain that to me. We should uh, we should bring Mr. Truck for for uh, that history lesson here, but uh, so uh, 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 let me give you a little bit of background, Jay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so so Andre did not did not lubricate his uh, trailer his <laughs> on my boat, boat on his boat. And Andre, uh -oh. why don't you enlighten Jay as to what happened when you forgot to do that <laughs> and how so, much it costs? So, so Jay, this was about six years ago. Uh, I have a twenty two foot. Ski boat. Nice. Because my wife really enjoys it in the family. We all enjoy uh, uh, boating. Right. Um, and um, I did not grease my uh, wheel bearings. Yes, you did not grease uh, Over the winter. And then I took the trailer out, checked tire pressures. Thankfully, those were okay. And I brought the uh, boat home from storage. And when I was making the turn into my neighborhood, I noticed that one of the tire's wheels came off the trailer. <laughs> and it, became to st it started to pass me. <laughs> This is a four a dual axle trailer, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, it's a tandem axle dual axle trailer, and one of the wheels decided to just come off. And, it's never and, a good thing, Andre. Yes. It's not great. So I quickly pulled over. Thankfully, I was at a very low speed in the, in the neighborhood um, at like 10 miles an hour. I stopped immediately, and basically what happened, the wheel bearing basically seized. seized. Yeah. Uh, it was rusty inside. Uh, seized. The wheel just stopped, and it kind of like sheared some of the bolts or you know over time just just sheared it and it came off the hub just came off the hub so do you have to chase the tire down the street no i did not and how, uh, uh, two questions yes uh, the more important one is the second one the first one is how much did it cost you to repair it thousands of dollars uh, you you might ask why why so when it came off the hub, um, the way that trailers, so trailers are built very cheaply, right? Yes. And that's part of the answer to your rant. Yes. Um, and the, uh, when it came off the hub, it actually uh, scarred and scored the, uh, the spindle. So basically making the whole axle unusable. You cannot reuse this, you know, it's completely, because things have to rotate on there. So then I had to replace axle. Yeah. And then my mechanic said, well, why don't you replace both axles? Because they're both old. So after $3,000 later, I got brand new axles and now electric brakes because I had surge brakes before that. Mm. So that was a very expensive, very unnecessary so, so here's the more important question. <laughs> I know the answer to this. Never, what as a it? journalist, you're never supposed to ask a question you don't know the answer to. Have you greased the bearings on our iron bull, Andre? <laughs> <laughs> trailer. Oops. <laughs> I take yeah, it that's a no. <laughs> we have I, an iron bolt trailer that we've actually, been using for what, two years now? 
Yes, uh, the answer is yes. You have? Oh, so you so uh, Alex, Alex on our team yeah. uh, brought his grease gun. Okay. So, oh, so what makes it a little bit easier so is... So Alex greased him. Uh, yeah, so you have a Zerk fitting. Uh, can I do my rant now? Yes, please. You have a Zerk fitting on the wheel bearings. So it's supposed to make it a little bit easier, right? You get a gun, you get some grease. It's very simple. It's like 20 bucks. Uh, come up and pump, pump some grease into each bearing. And after about 10 minutes, you're done, right? It sounds very simple. But what happened to me also with my boat is it's very easy to overdo it, right? You accidentally put too much grease in an, into it, into the hub. Mm -hmm. Then you start driving to Lake Powell, right, in the middle of summer. It's 95 degrees outside or 105 degrees outside. What happens? The grease expands and it starts spraying out of your hubs and it sprays all over your boat. So you had grease all over your boat? Yes. Wow. That has also happened oh, to me. Wow. So owning trailers is very troublesome and very maintenance heavy um, or you can take the hub off you can grease it by hand and it will take hours and I hours did that. I and did that hours with, with Kent yes I did a video doing that it takes yes. a long it time. takes a long time so yeah. either do it simply and accidentally overdo it or do it in a very time-consuming <laughs> manner and to be fair a uh, boat uh, trailers go underwater, right? So they, when, uh, you, when you launch the boat, you do put the wheels get to back into it a little bit I, into yeah. the lake or wherever you're. Launching. And water can enter inside yeah. of that. So, yeah. so they do have a, a much more a drastic use case than most trailers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what about the tires? Why are the tires always so like 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 you know? They, I think it's just, just money industry, saving. Yeah. Well, so what what was before, right? Um, California still has this law: fifty-five mile an hour tow, towing speed limit. Right? I know. So I don't know why California hasn't changed that. They should. Uh, in every other state, you can tow at the speed limit of the highway, which is 65, 75, 80, whatever. Um, so those tires were built in a different way, you know, for slower speeds because it's cheaper. Uh, now, a lot of the tires are actually um, actually built to a higher standard. And my current tire, I haven't had a blowout, knock on wood, in like five seasons. Because there's, seven, no, there's nothing seasons. worse than getting a blowout on a trailer when it's loaded. Yes. It's just a huge pain. And the problem usually comes from overloading that trailer, yeah. right? As soon as you overload that trailer, let's say you overloaded your boat with your, you know, coolers of your drinks and food and gear. All of a sudden, the trailer is too heavy. Boom, you have a blowout, and then you have a nightmare. Yeah, and you got, you're stuck on the side of the road with semi trucks whizzing And by. your children running around. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not it's, a very fun day to the day. <laughs> no, it? no. And here's the funny thing. So I want to say like eight, seven years ago, I forget now, I did a video with uh, Kent about this company that was actually doing tire pressure monitoring yes. on, mm. on, on trailers, right? Because you have to have it now by law on your truck. Uh, and it was going to like be uh, wireless and yeah. you know, it was going to send a little uh, signal and you had a little display. That was the next big thing. Never happened. I've never seen a wireless uh, tire pressure monitor on a trailer in actual real life use. Uh, except it, for this testing it, we did. Exactly. So, and yeah, and Kent, Mr. Truck, still has that, um, that little system device on, yeah, the system on, his, on truck, his trailer. But never caught on. It would, it would seem like a very logical thing because yeah. especially when you're towing heavy, right, you want to have the right pressure in those tires. So, especially those crappy, let's face it, trailer tires. Yeah, exactly. So, like GM and Ram and I think Ford started doing this. Um, they have kits where you can buy uh, uh, tire pressure monitor sensors for your trailer. And they come in a little Ziploc baggie. <laughs> I've seen it in some loan vehicles. But, okay. but, but that's not enough. No. You have to go to the uh, tire store, you have to install those in, inside of your tires. It costs time, money. Then you have to you know, hook it up to your truck. So, so I, I'm gonna do one more rant before we get to the second. <laughs> wow, rant this, is rant, this is ranty. Yeah. I, wow, I, yeah. I, wanna do this, I wanna do this rant for a long time. Uh, and I, it's a funny rant because it, it happened to me here. recently. So, uh, uh, you know, we recently went and test drove both the GMC, uh, you did the AT4X, uh, and I did the Lightning, all right? And mm -hmm. so uh, Ford was kind enough uh, to ferry me away from the rest of the journalists when I got to the program because they wanted me to tow the 8,300-pound uh, trailer boat combination. Yes. But the cool thing was it was an electric boat, right? Can we get that boat? Uh, can we get that boat? Yeah. I, it's called the Ark, I think. Yeah. Uh, I, I was so busy doing videos <laughs> that the guys, the guys who who built that boat were there, and they looked very nervous when I got in uh, to the truck <laughs> to go tow it. I, I would imagine that boat is quite expensive, Roman. I, I think it is. I yeah. think they said it's like a half million dollars. Yeah. It's a, it's a prototype, and and the commenters were saying that that they would have been happier had you been towing it. <laughs> well, so we're outside of San Antonio, right? 
on these like little uh, hill country roads uh, at a thing called Singing Waters, right? It's a, it's a winery. Um, and um, GM has, and the first time I actually got to use this was, of all places, in a, in a remember this? We did it in a Discovery. It's got their toe proing backup assist. Yeah. So it's a little knob, Jay, that uh, okay. changes the way you tow. So what you do is you stick uh, like these little uh, stickers onto the trailer, uh, and then uh, the, the truck knows where the trailer is in conjunction to the truck. And so when you back up, what you use is this little knob that you turn, which turns the steering wheel. So instead of being counterintuitive, what I mean by that is instead of to go left, you go right, and to go right, you go left. You go, you turn the knob right if you want to go right when you're backing up or left, right? Okay. Makes so sense. so so they had it hooked up to that. So we go out, and because we had very little time, I didn't want to do the whole dry route. Uh, so I did uh, some zero to sixties, which is terrifying. <laughs> On these launching country, the launching the eighty three hundred pound yeah. boat trailer combo, uh, but it was. Well, I'm not going to tell you how fast it was. Go to the well, video. Well, TFL Truck has a video. Yeah, all yeah. oh, TFL.com. Yeah. yeah, go check it out. Uh, it was very impressive. So I didn't want to go on the highway. I was just doing the video. Uh, but I had the navigation set for this, like, you know, 45-minute drive route. So I turn around. I'm heading back to uh, the Singing Waters Ranch. Uh, and then I forgot that I didn't reset the navigation. So the navigation takes me up this winding road. Very winding road, like almost like a one-lane winding road. This is like in the hill country. In the almost, hill country, right? right? Okay. Uh, and I'm like, this is weird. Uh, and then <laughs> I'm with the and then about maybe a third of the mile off, we hit a gate. Oh, and there was no way you were gonna, you know, you were gonna turn this. This, this, this up. The boat was also the longest trailer there. They had a whole bunch of different trailers on there. Mm. They had like uh, an Airstream, the heaviest trailer there. I think Jill towed uh, from pickup truck from Tim's channel. Right there was it was water totes, which I th it's boring. Let's face it, towing water is boring on video. An electric boat is cool. Yeah, yeah. And, and the water was heavier. It was like I want to say it was like ninety one hundred, ninety two hundred pounds. Okay. It was getting okay. more, but still eighty three hundred pounds is a lot. So I'm like, holy cow. Now I can not turn the boat around, and Andre's not next to me. He's <laughs> next to me. And I got to back up this boat a third of a mile. Up down, a hill or something? Down a hill. Down a hill? Down a hill. He told me about a this. single lane, twisty road. <laughs> and I'm like, thank God it's got backup assist, right? Okay. So I'm like, okay, let's see if I can. And you know what? It was actually a lot harder <laughs> to use the backup, With a backup? Up assist yeah. than it was to actually just do it manually. I, I mean, if you tow enough, it becomes so like ingrained. ingrained in, in your it's head. like it's like muscle memory, right? Right. Exactly. So I was like, screw that. I'll just use the old-fashioned way. Uh, and I was able, to, you know, I went very slowly, uh, but I was able to back it down this twisty road just doing it the manual way. So I'm not sure that that is a very useful feature, Andre, because we've had it. Uh, we had it on our uh, Rebel, right? Which truck and do we the have it on? TRX. We TRX on? has it. We have, a, have we ever used it? Uh, used it once for a video. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, and then I'm not trying to like beat my chest and say, if you're a manly man, <laughs> you should know how to tow. I'm just saying, it, I don't think it makes it any easier. So we, we tested it here with the RAM, right? Yeah. And now the RAM, so they're going away from the stickers. You know, the stickers were a little bit complicated. Right. Even Ford is going away from that. Uh, but the but RAM... This, this still had the stickers, though. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. It's, it's it still had the stickers, yeah. Um, so the RAM, when you go around the block forward, it kind of remembers, it kind of figures out the trailer, right? It looks, it uses the camera. I talked to some I, of the by engineers. The way, I love that. The RAM does this cool thing, Jay, mm -hmm. where when you're put in tow home mode, right? Uh, it uses the, uh, um, the the sensors, the radar sensors for blind spot monitoring, and it figures out how long a trailer is. It kind of estimates it. Yeah. It estimates it. So it says you're towing a 40 foot trailer, and then the blind spot actually covers a trailer. I love that feature. I miss that feature. And a it lot. does it so automatically. It does it. It's, yeah, yeah. It's just got to make a hard turn. Yeah. So you know, before you start towing, you so, like make a left or right. Yeah. In a similar way, it it calibrates that backup assist system. And we have a video. I think it's maybe on TFL Truck or TFL Now channel. Um, uh, this was a couple years ago, or a year and a half ago. But I backed up a trailer around our office, yeah. right, uh, which is a really tight area mm -hmm. in the parking lot here. Uh, and the trailer backup assist kind of worked, but it wasn't as aggressive as I would be. You know, sometimes you need to make a tighter turn, right. and I'm kind of aware of that. Um, it, yeah, it was just not as aggressive as I wanted it to yeah, be. Yeah, I, I just find it to be no easier, uh, and if in some ways... Almost, it's like one of those one of those technologies that doesn't make your life easier. It just makes it different. Different, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and not, not unnecessarily so. 
what you're saying. I, like, yeah, I mean, just, it was a, like I said, the first time we did it was, remember we were at the Eliado show, we did it with the Discovery. Remember they had it yeah. in the Discovery. In a tight area. In a tight area, yeah, yeah outside the Eliado show. You know, the only thing that it, it's useful, and the Tundra has this too, Yeah, it's uh, where it helps you back up in a straight line. Yeah, I was going to talk about that. So yeah. the Tundra has this new feature where uh, it doesn't like have a knob, it just backs up in a straight line, except when we tested it, Andre, it didn't work really well. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So the thinking there is right. There's no, and Andre will appreciate this. Jay, there's right. nothing more embarrassing than you know backing your boat down the boat <laughs> ramp with three thousand like half drunk guys are watching you, and, and you do it crooked. It, yeah. It, yeah. It becomes like a, it becomes like a. It's, you know, it's like those wavy runner things, right? Where the guys try to. Have you seen right. those videos? Of course. In Florida. Yeah. yeah. It's like the same thing, except for backing up a boat into the water right they're they're like you know guys sitting out there and we've had a little bit too much beer uh, basically uh, uh egging you on to fail <laughs> <laughs> and they're videoing you at the same at the time, same time. It's yeah. not at all time. intimidating or, <laughs> no. you know, so that feature is, is helpful in those if scenarios works. if it works so, so explain how the tundra system works so basically the way it should work and and it's um and actually um, i think it works better with slightly longer trailers yeah, so we had a little like uh, it was, it a was little, like a little single airstream. axle uh, it was airstream yeah what is it like the echo or something it's called so, anyway base camp um Base camp, yes, base camp. Um, the the way supposed the system is supposed to work. You line it up. Let's say uh, you line it up to go into the direction you want to uh, um, while backing up, and then you let go of the steering wheel. The system is enabled, mm -hmm. um, and then even if it's uh, if the truck and the trailer are a little bit out of line, the truck can see using the cameras, and it will straighten you out, and it will kind of continue down that path where the trailer was. So it's very helpful at the boat. Uh, loading ramp because Clever system. you kind of get the trailer kind of in the vicinity where you want to go right and then the kind of truck helps you back it up yeah so it's like it's like when you see those lines on the camera uh you know it just straightens out those lines yeah. so that yeah. you go straight back mm -hmm. <laughs> so i can see that being useful but like parking trailers in the weird situations using the knob it's at least for me, and maybe if also for you, that's not really useful. I, I, I know very few more fear-inducing moments in my life than having a long trailer and taking it down like a street that I don't know where I could turn around, right? The, the worst example of that was when we did... Um, I remember um, the Tatra trip. The right? Tatra trip where I went yeah. into uh, D.C., into Georgetown, which was really stupid with this really long trailer. You were driving a Raptor. I was driving a Raptor pulling this wide, long trailer and I had to try to figure out where to park it. And I got in a situation where there were literally, you know, the cars parked along the side of the road. There were literally like a half an inch on either side. And there's no F way I'm going to back that thing up. <laughs> I just want to know what you were thinking. Uh, well, uh, so we were staying. We, we were it was Emmy. a long road trip. Yeah, we were staying with Emmy's friend, and we were like, "Hey, we need to park this somewhere." And she's like, "Oh, there's street parking." And I'm like, "I don't think there's street parking." Was, in was it in Baltimore? It was in Baltimore, right? You were approaching Baltimore it was somewhere. somewhere. Yeah, it was like somewhere like in in deep urban Baltimore, right? Which is someplace <laughs> you should never take a trailer. That's what learned. And she's like, "Oh, there's street parking." Yeah, for a smart car, <laughs> <laughs> not a Raptor towing a big trailer. <laughs> Uh, and we, I was tired. It was like midnight. Oh, my God. That After was, driving 800 miles? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was just horrible. Yeah. There's nothing more fear-inducing. Or like pulling a, a trailer into a small gas station, right? That's also yeah. also really tricky because you get all these people. And then you've got, of course, the, the, the fundamental problem that there's liquid there that can explode <laughs> <laughs> if it's rammed by a big object. <laughs> there you go. All right. Let's, let's get to our main uh, uh, topic, uh, and that is what's the best type of truck and the best type of engine to tow with, right? Uh, so let's just do it in order. Let's go from smallest to largest, because I know okay. the obvious answer is going to be heavy-duty diesel. But is that true, Andre? Well, it, it depends on how much you're towing, right? Right. I mean, and what your needs are. But I think... Uh, most people don't need a dually, a big diesel, right? Yeah. So what happens if you don't need a dually? So that's why we, we that's why we want to discuss. All right. So you know what happens with the smaller pickups? Yeah. Let's start. Yeah, with, what does happen? Yeah. Let's start. Let's start with compact trucks and move our way up. Uh, so there are basically only two compact trucks. Uh, there's the Santa Cruz, which we have. Thank you, Hyundai, for a long-term one-year loan. Uh, and then there's the Maverick, uh, and both of them come in two flavors. Uh, so a Santa Cruz can be had with a 2.5. Um, liter four cylinder that is uh, normally aspirated with an eight speed automatic. Mm -hmm. yep. Uh, yep. Or it could be had with a 2.5 liter turbo 
uh, with the dual clutch, which is what we have. Yes. Uh, and of course, the compact truck is, you know, the small, new kind of tiny truck. Um, and uh, I would say, you know, if you're going to be towing, uh, the better tow rig up in that case is probably the turbo, but it's ha hamstrung uh, by the dual clutch. I don't think dual clutches are great for towing. I think dual clutches are great for like track work. But they're not going great. faster exactly. on the track. Right. Yeah, they're, they're, you know, you know when I had a really good uh, time with that vehicle. So we were doing some drag racing, right? And you think it'd be quick, mm -hmm. uh, but it isn't because you floor it and nothing happens. So you've got a little bit of turbo lag, and then finally the dual clutch wakes up. But by that time, the other vehicle is like halfway down the down the drag strip. But I was uh, trying to overtake a vehicle going to a ranch. Uh, and that dual clutch is magnificent under those circumstances, right? You floor it, and immediately it drops down a gear, and you are like a bat out of hell. Well, the dual clutch means it has two gears, kind of one working and one pre-selected, right? Yeah, it's like one. Like, so yeah. one is waiting. Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. around the track, if you're racing or passing somebody on on the highway, it works really well. But what it ends up happening, at least when you go off road with it, Jay, is uh, it tends to overheat. And I don't mm -hmm. know if it overheats towing, so you towed we, with it. We, we haven't overheated the so tow. So tell me how to tow. Uh, so we've, we've done, we have a video on TFL Truck as well. And so, what's the tow rating, you remember? Uh, yeah, 5,000, okay. So which is actually pretty good. really good for, for a, a compact. compact. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's solid. Um, but obviously, uh, it's a unique uh, combination. It's the turbo with the dual clutch and a spe you know, special you know, prep package. And you have to obviously have a hitch and wiring, and you need trailer brakes. And they don't provide, of course, at this uh, level in the Santa Cruz, the um, integrated brake controller for a trailer. Well, but well, that's if if you go to five thousand, if it's less than that. Yes, if it's less, it's if it's like three or less in most states. You don't need the brake controller. Anyway, it it so here's the thing about the Santa Cruz. It drives like a crossover, right? It does not drive like a pickup. It's it has a really comfortable ride, uh, very nimble, and it feels feels great. And it felt kind of similar with the trailer. We, we were towing close to 4,000 with it because we were comparing against the Maverick. Do we, right? call, do we call it the Tyke Ike, that video? No, that I specifically did not. Okay. Because our Tyke Ikes are reserved for only the tiniest of trailers. And by, by the way, you, know, you bought that little tiny thing, the little tiny little, little car? Yeah, a little toy. Yeah, that we used to put on. I gave that away. Oh, it's gone. It's gone. Yeah. Oh, the Tyke Ike. I gave it away. A, okay. Yeah, I just think. Is there a happy child that's now? I has figured. It? Yeah, it was just sitting in our closet. I think there <laughs> should be some happy child that's trucking around in that little guy, as opposed to waiting for us to stick it on the front of a trailer, making people think that we've got a that's, tiny child in the trailer. <laughs> let's face it. I, th I think the Tyke Ike never never took off. No, no. So yeah. I, I gave it away. So it, it was about four thousand pounds, and when you compare it to the Maverick, and the Maverick now has a two liter turbo. Right, and that's kind of the, its most uh, capable uh, for towing uh, setup, and it, it has an eight-speed um, automatic with with its turbocharged engine. Um, the Maverick, in comparison, tows a little bit more like a truck, like uh -huh. a little tiny F one fifty. So I don't know I don't know how that's set up, but that's kind of what it feels like. So it feels it's more it, trucky. It's a little bit more trucky. Yeah, um, it doesn't feel like a crossover with a bed. It feels like a baby, like a like, a, like a shrunk, like somebody uh, really it. super shrunk could a Ford Ranger. Like, could be the suspension. Doesn't it have uh, what's the suspension on it? Well, they're, it they're independent they're, rear suspension. They're, yeah, they're both independent, independent rear, rear, but the way they're tuned is a little bit different. Uh, uh, it's really weird because the uh, non-hybrid, right? No, the, is it the non hybrid? One of the one of the two has a really like like heavy duty ride, and that's not a compliment. One, one and of, I think that's the turbo. That's the turbo because the yeah, hybrid was, was a lot turbo. more yeah. comfortable. Yeah, the turbo has a ride. The, the four wheel drive, <laughs> yes. four wheel drive one has yeah. has a ride like a heavy duty truck <laughs> that's not laden with anything, and that's not a good ride. It, it kind of yeah. it kind of bounces across expansion joints and and the Maverick hybrid feels normal. Way, way, yeah. way, way feels better. like an escape. Yeah. Which it is. It, uh, it, it is. The it, same it, it is a stretched escape yeah, platform. Exactly. Yes. So in that case, but but the th the thing is, the hybrid only is rated to tow up to like two thousand. So if you do want to bring a slightly larger trailer, like mm -hmm. a little boat, a little camper, like uh, like we were talking Which about, which is weird because theoretically the hybrid, because it's electrified, should have more torque. So yeah, you would think. You yeah. would think it would be set up for more. So, but it, it's also not available all-wheel drive in so, the hybrid. So, Jay, I'm sure Andre knows this answer, but what do you think is one of the biggest criteria in terms of setting um, the maximum towing of a vehicle? There's one overriding factor usually that determines how much a vehicle can tow. And 
I know you're more of a car guy than a truck guy. And right. We, Andre and I have had lots of conversations with lots of engineers. So I'm, I'm pretty sure about this, but I'll, I'll run it by you as, as soon as Jay makes a guess at it. So, you know, like every truck has a maximum towing. Right. So what do they use to determine that? I mean, there's a test, right? There's a, there's a, there's mm. a Society of Automotive Engineers test where they have to, like, go to Davis Dam uh, and they have to be able to hold the load uh, uh, at an incline, at speed, at yeah. speed and, and, and park it and not have it roll back. There's a whole bunch of things they have to do. But what is, like, the, the limiter, the factor that usually, like, keeps it below a certain threshold of towing ability? Hmm. I'm kind of stumped at this one, actually. Yeah. I'm more of a car guy, like you said, but yeah. I'm very curious to know. Some, should, some people say it's suspension. Yeah, but usually which is no, not I didn't true. Think it was it's suspension. not true. Yeah, some you know some people might say it's like is it a you it's know, your horsepower. Is it your horsepower? Some people no, might I was say thinking maybe torque. Some people might say brakes. Some people might say is it the the ladder frame versus you know a unibody? No, it's heat. It's, it's your being, radiator. It's your radiator. It's, 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 it's being able to keep it. Yeah, it's being able to keep why. It's being able to keep your transmission and your uh, engine cool enough to handle the loads because when you're towing, you're putting a lot of stress on the power of train. Uh, and you know, stress is usually transmitted in the form of heat. Uh, and, and Which is why the new Tundra and most other trucks have gigantic grills. And you don't want to bring out that transmission. <laughs> hey, so let's, since Jay's new to TFL, why, why don't we enlighten them what happens when, when, when things fail? Because we've had things fail towing, Andre. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about, like, what happens when, when stuff fails. Oh, when, I, I really want to hear this. Yeah, what, let's talk about, like, our Silverado that we have yet to retest because GM has not brought it back. So t let's tell a Silverado story. So the Silverado, this was last year, uh, we towed it with the 1500, 6.2 liter. Okay. Which is uh, one of their most uh, capable for towing. Yes. Uh, which is their biggest V8. 420 horsepower, uh, yeah. 450 pound foot of torque. And it was a hot summer day. Yeah, and we towed it like straight up a mountain. Yeah, so from Boulder, Colorado, where we are now, right. we went up to uh, Gold Hill, mm -hmm. which is not very far, nope. about like 15 to 20 miles. But it's very steep. But very steep and also slow going. So a lot of that is like 25 miles an hour. A lot to of serpentines. Serpentine yeah. climbing up and down the mountain. Yeah. Some of it is dirt. And uh, we overheated um, the transmission. Yeah, we, we have a video about this. Um, and yeah, um, so it was you, about 100 degrees ambient. So you got a warning, right? We got a warning. So the truck said um, overheating. Mm -hmm. um, and it said, please pull over. Uh, please stop and cool down as soon as possible. Like, so, like, like normally, look, if you take a car on a racetrack, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. This could be electric, too. When you start to overheat things, the vehicle will derate itself. Right. So what it'll do is basically it'll pull torque. It'll pull power. Except you, when you're towing, you can't do that. <laughs> you, can't, you can't derate yourself. We were towing about 7,000 pounds. Yeah, it's not going to work. <laughs> well, you could derate yourself. but You'll would, just be crawling, I yeah. guess. Uh, okay. But that's even worse because that's worse. what was happening, it, there wasn't enough air going across the radiators, right? It was kind of slow speed. But we were nowhere near its maximum capacity. No, well, we were you know, it, It's rated to tow like up to 12,000 pounds um, or sometimes a little bit more in certain configurations. Um, it, is the one we had. So we were towing 7,000 pounds, which is well within its capability, and we did overheat it. Uh, but because it was related to the transmission, um, it's really hard to cool off a transmission. When it's, once it gets hot, mm -hmm. it'll stay hot for a while. Yeah, once upon a time, uh, if you bought a towing package on a truck or even on a car, it usually meant that you had a, either an extra or an oversized transmission cooler radiator basically mm -hmm. and, and for some reason the manufacturers got away from that some of them got away from yeah that. and i think it's maybe simplification um what what they sometimes do is they run a transmission oil line through the radiator mm -hmm. core the radiator core for the engine for the coolant itself okay so it's not an auxiliary transmission cooler it's just going and it's using the same circuit um so it's kind of using that big radiators but what happens i mean the engine is hot so the radiator is already hot, and you're running hot f uh, oil through a portion of it too. So it's just it just kind of um, gets hotter. It gets hotter and hotter and hotter. So that happened. So so, so what did you do? So you, you stopped. So we over. stopped for a long time. Yeah. I started to use my heater. This was 100 degrees Fahrenheit. That old trick. Old yeah. trick. Oh, I, I, love I that. thought I thought, oh Andre, turn on your heater core. So I blasted heat as I was sitting there. 
uh, idling, basically. Yeah, but basically what you're doing is you're using the heater to transfer heat, heat from the engine to the, into cabin, the cabin, which yeah. is very pleasant in the middle of summer. <laughs> I was say, that must have been a great time. So eventually we made it. Uh, so we were there for half an hour. Uh, I drove a little bit more. Um, we really wanted to do enough for the review. That's why we were towing two side-by-sides up a mountain. Yep. So we eventually made it, and we will be retesting this truck. Yeah, so what happened? So then we returned it. We told GM. We tried to give you know the manufacturer a heads up when things fail. I think that's a courtesy thing, right? Absolutely. But we told them, and what did, what did GM do? So they repeated the test. Yeah, they actually came here. They sent an engineer to Colorado. Yeah. Which and is, v- I was I really was impressed. impressed. Yeah. Right. yeah, that's, yeah. They, that's they, important. Um, they said that, it, you know, they were, this was a weird problem. They wanted to get to the bottom of it. They sent people here. They asked me where I was. You know, I told them, you know, which route we took, and they retested it. And what happened? And they, and they repeated the problem. <laughs> and now they got to the bottom of it, and now we will be retesting that same truck. And we'll find out exactly what so, the issue so, was. So kudos to GM for actually taking it seriously. Yes. Uh, and setting an engineer or engineering team and actually figuring it out, hopefully. I mean, it, hopefully. You know, GM's an engineer-driven company, but... Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. So we've had other failures. Uh, for oh, example, on. one that was we also showed the was with a heavy duty truck. Catastrophic it, failure. That it, was a catastrophic failure. It was an F two fifty. It was uh, the one with a gasoline engine. Okay. And what happened? Uh, Mr. Truck and I were towing a fairly heavy trailer once again within the capability of the truck up I-70 yeah, out of Denver. Th- that very steep part when you first get on I-70 outside of Golden, yeah. it's the first hill. You know, have you driven that? If you go oh, skiing, yeah. it's that very first hill. I think it's, what's it, what's that hill? Floyd Hill. That's what it's called, yeah, Floyd Hill. Yeah, uh, par- part of it, yes. Yeah. And, and it's pretty steep, like 6% yeah. grade. Three uh, lanes. Uh, three lanes. Everybody's flying 75 miles an hour. Yeah, we were going like 65, 70. You know, we were trying to keep up with traffic. Prob- no, always at speed limit, of How course. How much were you towing, do you remember? It was like we were it was like, like twelve thousand. We were towing Mr. Truck's old truck. Oh, that's right. Okay. So uh, we're towing like twelve thousand pounds, which is for heavy duty truck. It's within right. the limit. And all of a sudden, we hear bang, and I see steam coming out from under the hood. I, I was a passenger, and then I see we were the tire run over something. What ended up being what what happened was the water pump. Uh, seized. So the, basically the water pop that's connected to the engine using the serpentine belt seized. It threw the belt. The belt came off. The belt hit the, um, fan. the fan. Which broke. Which broke. Which, which, which went through, through the, the radiator. radiator. <laughs> so the radiator fluid started dumping on that the That is ground. a catastrophic failure. It's basically, yeah. yeah. So so the engine was still running. and then But we got all the warning lights. You know, coolant error. Um, you know, oil temperature. You get a light show. Uh, going uh, on. The yeah. light show. You were going to recycle this and start it up again. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Truck uh, very safely kind of got us to the shoulder. Yep. We stopped. Thankfully, there was a large shoulder where we could pull off. That was very, very nice. Uh, we pulled off far off, uh, stopped the truck. The engine was still running. So, I was like, Mr. Truck, uh, let's figure this out. So, we, we shut off the engine. And um, thankfully, the engine didn't was there was no damage to the engine or the transmission. Wow! Right. So uh, we got a trailer there, yeah. and then and then then of course now you got to tow back the truck and the trailer. So you know a lot of phone was, calls ensued. A lot of <laughs> lot, a lot of pieces had to be put in the right yes. place. <laughs> and anyway, and they're on the side of the road now. You with know, traffic with, going with, by. Yeah, trucks zipping by at uh, probably 55, They're going 60. fast. I've been on that hill before, that yeah. road. Yeah, not, it, it's pretty scary. Yeah. yeah. So and, then... And coolant flowing down the mountain. <laughs> so Ford took this very seriously, too. Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, you know, we, we, we showed part of that. We talked to Ford. Um, it was really, I think, just a part failure. Maybe the defective pump, right? So they replaced be, the pump. Could be heat again. Once again, it was hot. It was yeah. in the middle of the summer. Yeah. So... Um, Replace the pump, replace the radiator, replace the fan. We did the eye gauntlet, and the truck, you know, did great after that. The second time we, t- we tested it. Uh, remember, there was, we had also an issue where the Ram heavy duty went into limp mode. Yeah, I remember where that we, where it couldn't go up the Ike more no. than, faster than thirty miles an hour. Yeah, it was trying to protect itself. Yeah, basically. And we had a Ram go. That was. Uh, 
What, what truck was that? That was, was, it was that like a hundred. It was a fifteen. No, it was, was a heavy it? duty like Hemi. Oh, it was a Hemi. That's big, right. It was a gas heavy duty. Big, yeah. Gas heavy, heavy duty, duty, duty truck. That's once right. again, yeah. yeah. And once again, I think it overheated. Yeah. So the moral of the story, Roman, is heat. Is heat. heat. That's and, a common and denominator. We've here, never had a diesel fail, by the way. So we just talked about three issues we had with heat. Uh, all of them were gasoline engines. There's, there's, a, there's a pattern. And so we've run, and at this point, I think it'd be fair to say we've run the like, hundreds of times. Not thousands, but hundreds with every different truck. So let's move on to the next category of truck, which is uh, midsize. midsize. Uh, and uh, this is where people actually start towing for real, right? I kind of feel like if you're buying a Maverick or a Santa Cruz, you're gonna, if you have a hitch on it, you're going to use it to put bikes on or... You know what I mean? It's, it's probably not, or, or maybe you will tow like a little utility trailer with a lawnmower. Right. Or maybe you'll tow like a tiny teardrop trailer, but it's not going to be a, a towing rig per se. Most people will, will not use it for that. But mid-sized trucks, people start towing. Uh, and let's say you get up to what, about six, six to 7,000 is the max, depending on which truck you have and how it's configured. And now we're talking about different powertrains, right? This is really mm -hmm. what this is about. Yeah. So, for instance, uh, you can get a diesel in the GMC Twins, yeah. and you can get a diesel in the Gladiator. Mm -hmm. And we've towed with both of them. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you, let, let's start with the difference between gas and diesel. Which would you rather have to tow with in a mid-size truck? Would you rather have the Gladiator with the diesel and the Colorado with the baby Duramax, or would you rather have the six-cylinder, or would you rather have in the Colorado, you can also have the... Uh, um, What's the other one? Is it six or diesel? Is that are, the, are those only two choices in the Colorado? Uh, they do have a little gas four cylinder, but yeah, usually, that's, I think it's, it's a, like a work truck. Liter. It's kind of like a work parts yeah, delivery yeah. Uh, yeah. truck, and oh, oh. we haven't towed with gas four cylinder or, engines. Or you could get a turbo in the Ranger. Mm -hmm. So that's another definitely. Option. So let's talk about which of those you think is the best. So yeah, so well, let's talk about what you think is the best towing truck, and then which is yeah. the best power truck. So here's the thing about the Gladiator diesel, yeah. right? It has a V6 turbo diesel, eco diesel, three liter, mm -hmm. and it's really, I think, almost oversized for that truck. It has like 442 pound feet of torque. Wow. It has like 280 horsepower. I mean, this is a very powerful, very capable powertrain uh, with an eight-speed automatic, and almost like what 7,000 pound uh, towing rating. But you know what the Gladiator's fault is? The payload. Um, not enough payload. It kills the payload. So what? the more stuff, it's, here's the rule, right? The more cool stuff you put in a truck, heated seats, massaging seats. Big diesel engines. Big diesel <laughs> engines. I want to say that the payload on that thing is like 900 pounds. Or 1,000 pounds. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 I think one of the trucks, one of the Gladiators we tested was like near 900 pounds that's, on payload. That's like me, you, Nathan, and Blaze. And that's about it? And maybe Jay. Jay's pretty small. <laughs> yeah, toss me in there. Why not? How much do you weigh, Jay? Not about like 137. Yeah, see, it's, it's not a lot. Yeah, so we, you, I'm you, a bit you, heavier. You, you could go in there. Yeah. Anyway, so, so very capable power plant. Uh, and the beautiful thing about any diesel, right, is they don't have to rev very high. They stay at lower RPMs because that's where they make all their torque. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, the horsepower is made a little bit more down in the rev range, usually. Um, so they usually, it's, it's less stressful, in my opinion, because the engine is a little bit quieter. You're still towing down the highway, even on the I gauntlet, even right. going on the world's toughest towing and test. And also more range, usually. Yeah. You know, usually. When, you, when you're towing, usually you're trying to get a lot of stuff to a lot of places pretty quickly. Uh, and so it's nice to be able to just like point it down the highway and be able to go, um, let's At say- At least 200 or 300 miles. miles yeah. yeah, because mm -hmm. towing will cut your range in half. Or, or worse. Or worse, yeah, we haven't gotten electric vehicles. That's a whole yeah. other world. No. But yeah. it will cut your range in half. And so if normally, let's say you have that V6 uh, in the Colorado and you get a range of 300 miles, give or take, right? When you're towing, you might be 150. Whereas yeah. in a diesel, you're probably gonna get more like 200, 250. Exactly. So that's really important. Uh, what, what happens with some of the V6s, gas engines, right? They're buzzy. They're high in the RPM. Remember we tested the Gladiator with the V6 Pentastar? Yeah, you're, oh, the, the craziest one, Jay. This mm -hmm. is crazy. We thought there was actually some problem. With it. <laughs> Remember when we took the Gladiator with the Pentastar up the I gauntlet? Yeah. Oh, my God, Jay. I have never seen an engine rev so much so long. For so long. long. It was a max red line for that entire... Eight minutes of red line. Oh, that's painful. Oh, oh. my God. I, I thought, I was, one of the I worst thought, sounds in the world. I, I thought those pistons were going to fly... A fly out of that engine. I was like expecting any second to see a piston go. <laughs> so did but, they? But no, the mighty Pentastar survived. Yes. Uh, 
people give the Pentastar V6 lots of grief, but over the years we've showed it under stress. Well, we've also showed it overheat. <laughs> when was that? A, very, a long time ago we, when, the, when we had the Pentastar. That's the one, okay, that, this is the one time the Pentastar does not shine. And that's when you put it in a Ram 1500. Remember, we put it yes. in gas. It overheated as well. So I think it's a little bit too small for that, that big that's truck. That's a big vehicle. Yeah. So, so, right. so like but it's I'm, great for a Wrangler, like Tommy's. So like Andre said, like the diesel is probably oversized for the Gladiator, but the Pentastar is definitely undersized. <laughs> so if you have one <laughs> for in the a Ram, Ram yeah. 1500, I, I wouldn't like consider that a great towing rig. And the, and the other problem, quite honestly, is when you're maxed out at RPM, fuel economy becomes a huge issue. Yeah, you take a hit, obviously, because, well, the engine is trying to make maximum power and torque, right? Right. So the gasoline engine, and these engines are really rev happy. Even GM, the, the same thing, 3.6 liter gas v, uh, V6 in the GM truck. The red line is at like 6,100 RPM or 6,200 RPM. This is, this is like sports car territory as far as like RPM is concerned. Now, now normal, normally I, I would be a big fan of diesels, but, uh, yesterday we did a really interesting video where we compared the, the four classes of trucks. So we took a compact truck, uh, the Santa Cruz, a uh, mid-size truck, the Frontier, a full-size truck, Andre's, or a half-ton, however you want to talk about it, Andre's hybrid F-150, and our Ram 2500 Cummins, and we did a 160-mile loop to see which one was more fuel efficient. Okay. I'm not going to give away the answers, uh, but what was terrifying at the pump was the diesel was over a dollar more a gallon. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that is. It usually is on par. Sometimes it's even less, but now diesel is dramatically more. Uh, we're looking this at like five thirty-five. I think I was paying Ooh. per gallon on versus gallon. like four, four thirty-five four, four, or four-ish. It was four -ish, like four oh four. I think it was four oh four versus five thirty-five. For gasoline, yeah. Why that is, so, I don't know, Andre. So all of a sudden. And this is a recent thing. This is over the last few months. Yeah, it's like I, I, um, I used to say that like when fuel became more expensive than milk, we were in trouble, and we're there per gallon. I think this is trouble. Uh, you know, in diesel engines, technically, I mean, we talked about the midsize class. Um, they're a little bit more competent, other than the payload problem that we discussed in the midsize. Mm -hmm. So I would say if you want the best power plant, um, hmm. I would say in the midsize segment. Well, we have to t let's talk about the two bigger sellers, right? Let's talk about yeah, the Tacoma. Yeah, the Tacoma and the Ranger. So also. Tacoma has this weird thing where uh, they put a 3.5 liter. Uh, they took the yeah, 4 liter and then they changed it. They swapped it out. The 4 liter is still in the 4Runner and they put a 3.5. And the rationale was that it was supposed to be more fuel efficient. You went on that launch, right? Yeah, totally. Uh, what was the rationale? Why did they put a 3.5? Well, it's it's more high tech, yeah. and also the transmission they ch updated. So the five speed was the older transmission, and then they went the automatic, and then they went to six speed. This was in 2016 ish, um, and the three and a half liter is dual dual injection, right? There is a port and, and direct injection, so it could use different injection uh, cycles or different ways to improve efficiencies. So that, that's uh, a lot of that's a lot of words to say. It's pretty. Thirsty. <laughs> it doesn't seem to be. I don't I'm know if they sure solved many it, problems. Yeah, I don't think they made it much better. <laughs> and, and especially, it's especially daunting because, like, the engine and the automatic transmission do not talk to. It's like it's like feuding uh, couples. Couples. Yeah, they <laughs> they do not. They like turn their back. It's, you know what it's like. You know what it's like. What ever ever get in an argument with your wife or girlfriend, and you're oh, driving yeah. home, and she's just looking out the window, and she won't look at you. Oh, that's the worst. That's what oh, it, that's the what, silent that's the treatment. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. Uh, yeah that, that's what that that combination of, of automatic and yeah. three point wow. five in the Toyota is like. That's I'll be driving along and I look down and there's a car passing me and I'm doing forty five miles an hour. And I'm like, how did I get to forty five? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? It doesn't want to downshift. It doesn't want to down. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. Or sometimes it hunts. And to be fair, uh, like we test them in the mountains, right? It's up and down, up and down, and, and it's just not a good pairing. No. Just the, the V6 with that automatic. The, the manual, actually, because you have more control as a driver. You, you kind let of, me ask you this, Andre. Yes. I was just going to ask you this next. Do you like towing better with an automatic or with a manual? Well, automatic. Yeah, automatic. Manuals uh, are a pain. <laughs> well, 
I mean, it, I mean if it you're depends. on the highway when you're, when you're like in your top gear, it's fine. Yeah, but, but if you're in town, traffic, yeah. if you're going through Denver at rush oh, hour oh, and, and, and you, you know, underload and you're having, you know, you're towing heavy. I mean, it's when like men... Multi- it multiplies that pain yeah. by, by tenfold. And I think it's hard in the clutch, too. Yeah. I mean, it's hard in the transmission. It's yeah, hard in the driver. Heat more heat. Yeah, you're putting exactly. more heat. Exactly. So I think automatics are getting so good now so that, you know, especially the 10-speeds. Yeah. Uh, the 10-speed that uh, Ford has, the F-150, even the Ranger now has, uh, and the GM trucks uh, in the full size, the, the 10-speed is really good. And dare I say, mm-hmm. it, boys, I'm going to take a step back to the compact trucks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, there is one transmission that's worse at towing than a dual clutch. You know what I'm talking about, and uh, people are going to call me, uh, uh, you know, a Subaru hater because of this. Oh, I know where this CVT. is going. CVTs. Yeah, CVTs are not good for towing. Uh, no, they, they're not. And, and let's face it, you know, Nissan put a CVT in the Pathfinder, the previous generation, and people tow with that, and it does. It, once again, it does now, not hold up. Now it's a nine speed. They now went back a to a nine speed. Yeah, it does not hold up because what? Ne- then you've got this belt that's slipping up and down a cone, uh, and and you, then once again heat. Heat, right? You apply mm-hmm. a lot of like stress to it, and it does not like it. Yeah, it, it does not like. You know, I mean, the problem is that CVTs are maximized and they're designed for maximum fuel efficiency. Right? The engine stays in its. Uh, most fuel efficient rev band, Mm -hmm. but that's given the weight and the gearing of the car, all of a sudden you add 2,000 pounds or 5,000 pounds and it completely throws that algorithm off. Yeah, and longevity is a problem. I mean, of course it's rated for that, right? Right. They'll say, you know, it was rated for that weight, but longevity is a question uh, with trucks, right? All right, so let's, let's keep going. How about the Ranger? So, so a turbo now. now the Ranger turbo. now. This is a power plant I really like. Okay, it's a two point three. It's a turbocharged gas engine, and at first, on paper, when it first came out, we we're like wondering about it. Oh, is it is it good? Is it too small? Mm-hmm. Right? Is it going to be great? And all of a sudden, it turns out well, it's not the most efficient, of course, but great power acceleration. The ten speed works really nice with it, and and it tows great. It has lots of power. You know, you know what else tows really well? Mm-hmm. I towed a cross country with this, and people don't think about this too often. Uh, but Tommy and I to- towed. I'm, I'm, all right, Jim, I keep testing you. You'll get used to it. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, oh, I'm getting used to it pretty quickly here. Because it's fun. Sorry. Yeah, it's I just know. fun. I, I know you're more of a car guy than a truck guy. So I, I tell, I'll tell you what we towed. Okay. And you tell me what we, uh, what we were, what we were towing with. What vehicle? What truck? Okay. All right. So Let's we towed, we towed a Pioneer. I'm not going to tell you the brand, but a Pioneer from. L.A. to Denver. So what vehicle were we using to tow it? No, you were towing a Talon. Oh, sorry, Talon. It was it, the same manufacturer. Same, manufacturer. same manufacturer. Right. So it was, was, it was a Talon. We were towing a Talon. Taco! Yeah, yeah. Ta- Talons. All right, it's, a Talon is a side-by-side. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm going to keep giving you hints. Okay, when was this, though? It doesn't matter. Okay. A year ago. A year ago. So we were towing a Talon. It's a side-by-side. Mm. I'll give you the big hint. We were towing a Honda Talon. So what vehicle were we towing it with? Ridge line. Exactly. Uh, so th- that's actually a really good tow truck, Andre. Yeah. Well, I, people don't give enough the credit. The second generation one, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the latest one, the yeah, 2021. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it really tows well. Yeah. It was the HP. Well, you weren't super taxing it. I no, mean, you, you like towed like you towed like three thousand pounds with it, but, but still, it but it's really comfy, good. right? Yeah, it was comfy. You know that that truck is so comfortable. It's like being in a pilot. With a bed. Get, well, <laughs> it kind of is. Same platform. <laughs> Kind but it's a very a pilot, po- it's a very powerful. That's, yes. So that's a V6, right? Yeah, like yep. the Pentastar. But it's a very powerful V6. I want to say it puts out almost 300 horsepower. It's like 280ish yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. It's good. And the truck has at least with 3,000 pounds. It just cruises down the highway. It doesn't care. You feel very much in control. Once again, no uh, integrated brake controller. Let's talk about brake controllers. How many mid-sized trucks actually come with a brake controller? Do any come with them? You can get them. So here's the funny part. Yeah. The little Maverick has one. The Maverick in, has one. Yes, yeah. in the compact segment, which is weird. Wow. Which is weird, but that's how Ford is. You know, they they like to put the lots Ranger of truck in this. The Ranger doesn't have one. You can no. get it. Yeah, it's like a little accessory. So is the Tacoma. You can get it as an accessory. Tacoma, you is may Tacoma? have actually have to go off the market. Is it? Have a Colorado. Uh, um, you know who has an accessory? The Gladiator has that's an accessory. It. That's right. You're right. The little knobs. But we've never seen it. Uh, we've never. I've never used they it. They said there. They said it's a. Robert, they said it's going to be available, and then we've never actually seen it. Uh, hey, if anybody out there has a Gladiator with a with an accessory Jeep Jeep Jeep, Jeep brake, brake uh, controller, let us know because I don't think it exists. No, I think it exists. 
You think so? I believe them, but I've never used it. You think that actually it's 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 like in some trucks? So it's like actually, they've installed it in trucks. I think so. Okay. All right. I, I think it's a it's also like a dealer installed item. So you buy the truck and then the dealer installs it for you. The brake controller. Okay. So, but that's an issue. Most of them don't come with brake controllers. Right. It's it, Tacoma doesn't. The Colorado, uh, the Colorado GMC twins, the Chevy Colorado and GMC mm-hmm. Canyon do. So I think Chevy is really good then with this in the midsize segment. Uh, but as a as a norm, it's not the norm in the midsize segment. And once again, safety is really important. We talked about going up the mountain, overheating, but the scarier part is actually going down the mountain with no brakes. All right, well, let's, let's, let's not forget the other midsize truck. There's one other one we haven't discussed as far as, far as I remember, and that is, of course, the brand new Frontier, uh, which also has um, a V6. Mm-hmm. Uh, might be more horsepower, horsepower in class if you're using the right fuel. Right? 310. 310, yeah. yeah. Uh, and we actually have one at the office. We just got it. Um, so what do you think that uh, so, so a tow rig? So they added uh, tow mode. To it for the latest one. Oh, which that's is, good. Which is good. That's good. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. Right. Um, they had the tow mode. It so, just so, kind of reprograms the transmission. Yeah, let's talk mode. about that. So, what, what, you know, first of all, uh, let's do a rant. Okay. okay. Well, my, here's another rant. Okay. We're going to do one. We had three or right? four already. I, 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 I get once upon a time, if you want a tow haul mode, you would push a button on the end of the stock, and yeah. it would, this little like tow haul mode light would light up on mm-hmm. the dashboard, and you really had no clue what it was doing, if anything. It's like a little little trailer I mean, icon. You, you, got okay. little, you got a little light. <laughs> You're like, oh, I'm towing now. <laughs> it made you feel good. <laughs> yeah, right. But if it actually did something, I'm not sure. I think the thing it was supposed to do was if you had an automatic transmission, it would rev higher so it wouldn't shift as early. So instead of like having it shift at 4,500, let's say it would shift to 5,500. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then going down a hill or mountain, right, it would also uh, – downshift at a different point to give you as much engine braking as possible. Is that yeah, right, Andre? The, it's called grade shifting. Grade shifting, right. yeah. So it's it's more important, actually, in the downhill because it tries to slow you down. So And that's what a lot of the tow haul modes are supposed to do. Um, and also, well, and it's also less efficient if you're going in, like, stop and go traffic because, like you said, it revs higher on the way accelerating and it revs higher the, when you're decelerating. So, So it's just supposed to help you tow better yeah and so um here's my rant okay then technology moved ahead uh and now of course because the vehicles are so computerized when you plug in a trailer not when you hitch it up but when you plug it in right the truck knows that there's something you know behind it it's like it's like a dog with a leash you're like what the hell is that oh there's something on me right yeah yeah right Uh, and and my rant is why do they still have to make you manually put it in tow haul mode? And now it's no longer a little button, right? It's usually like a little selector that is like this. If you have, especially an off-road truck, right? There's mm-hmm. like off-road mode. There is snow mode. There Moguls is... Moguls mode. Well, yeah, there's, there's like 15 different... <laughs> Ford does like 15 different modes. Eco modes. Hyundai does smart mode, whatever the hell that is. As and to tow mode. mode. And tow mode. Why doesn't it just go... You know, if, if you've got a trailer plugged in, what else would you be plugging in there? Christmas lights? You should pick it up automatically. <laughs> Right. It's or should they ask you, hey, hey would, you, know, would you yeah. like that? Yeah, because now. now, of course, you can also do this thing where you can uh, maintain a record of what trailer you're towing. So if you own a trailer, the truck not only knows you're towing, but if you've actually taken the time to input the trailer, it knows what trailer you're towing. Uh, and then it calculates the amount of time you've been towing. So it, it, and the miles you've been towing. miles, yeah. yeah. Which is good because you're putting a lot more stress on the truck. So you can remember to uh, lubricate your wheel bearings. Exactly. So wh- right. why the heck do we have to put it in tow haul mode if you plug in a trailer? It's a great question. You know who's taking this further? And I think, you know what the problem is, what? right? I'll let, I'll let you, uh, sorry. Uh, the problem with that is, like, I'll be towing, right? And I'll forget to put it in tow haul mode and I'll somehow feel like I'm doing damage to the truck. Because I've got a trailer. Like, oh my gosh. Oh my God. It's not in, because you, know, you stop to go to the bathroom, you stop to mm. go get a drink or something, you know, you just forget, right? I'm sorry, what was your question? That, that's, that's a great point. Yeah. Because the other thing that tow haul mode, and um, Mr. Truck, um, we, we've talked about this at iGauntlet sometimes, when the engine is revving higher, which it often does in tow haul mode, technically it's like uh, athlete running, right? Mm-hmm. Your blood, your heart is pumping fast, your blood is moving. Um, it, it helps to kind of cool down the whole system because, you know, uh, 
you like uh, sweating more. Yeah, Sorry, you're, yeah, you're basically working more, yeah. so you're you're actually maintaining the whole tr- system in a better state, um, which is what the whole mode is supposed to be doing. And you know what else it should do when you plug what? in a trailer? It should turn on the lights. Yes, because uh, Andre has a CDL, and he knows that if he's towing, you have to have your lights on. But also, it helps you understand, like, so that your connection is still maintained with your trailer, right? Because you can look back, and you can see little marker lights on your trailer, and that's when you know everything is great. Everything is still connected. So, yeah, so, so when, when you're towing commercially, commercial driver's license, you have to have your lights on. You don't necessarily have to have your lights on when you're towing privately but it's a good it's like you know it's like wearing a helmet on a bicycle you don't have to have one but <laughs> god help you if you fall <laughs> you don't have yeah, one. just yeah. an additional safety thing um and then so rivian is actually kind of extending this paradigm because when we told the rivian we so, can start talking about this now yeah so yeah but so it's another bit sized well it's, a, it's kind of ish. ish so rivian has this unique brake controller where it's actually electronic so it's in the screen versus being, so the way a brake control normally works, Jay, is uh, there is a, a little like grab handle and you pull it another little toggle sideways. And when you pull, you're activating the brakes on the trailer. And then there's usually a plus and a minus button and you can add gain or in other words, how much the trailer brakes uh, based on uh, how much you need. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Rivian has kind of turned that on its head. Yeah, so now the controller for that gain is now digital, yes. right? Not the actual mm-hmm. push button, which is okay. And then the brake controller override, you know, the manual control, uh, yeah. is actually a little wheel on the steering wheel. Which, which is also the wheel that controls the side mirrors, which is also <laughs> the wheel that controls uh, the seating The position. volume. Uh, or yeah, the volume. <laughs> it's just, yeah. yeah. Now, now, it's, now it's the wheel that controls your, your brake controller. <laughs> yes, but what they do do is when we plugged in the uh, plug from the trailer, uh, the seven pin connector into the Rivian, it actually says you're plugging something in would you like to home mode so it's actually trying to be smarter which so i think they're on the right um, mm-hmm. kind of path there uh, but uh, once again the controls are a little bit different so andre uh, now we're getting into electric trucks but i think we've gone an hour and i think this is such an interesting conversation we probably need to do a part two because the world of Full size or half tons is just and heavy duties and heavy duties is so much to discuss because now we're really getting into the towing powertrains and the towing rig. So I say we, uh, you know, to be continued. Well, can, can we summarize this in this way? Okay, go for it. So no, let's, let's summarize it this way. Yes. What's the best compact or mid-sized towing truck? If you had to pick one, what would be the best truck and what would be the best powertrain? I'll, you give me yours. I'll give you mine. Ooh, for the compact, I would say. And still, this is, I think I said that before, it would have to be the turbocharged Maverick. Okay. It doesn't tow quite as much. It's not rated to tow as highly as the Santa Cruz. Right. It's about 4,000 pounds. But I just felt it was a little bit more I'm trucky. I completely agree. It's a little bit yeah. more trucky, yeah. right? So the compact uh, Maverick turbocharged one is, if you're towing, I think that's the one. For the midsize segment, it's a little bit harder. There's a lot more choice. I'll go, I'm going to go with uh, Diesel Gladiator. And I'm going to go with the Ranger. Okay. So we we're, we're disagree there. Yeah. So I, I think, in general, diesel, like you said, more range, more capability. Uh, I like the powertrain on the Ranger. It's just great. And to avoid, I'd say avoid the Pentastar. It'll do it. I think they changed the, the throttle mapping so it doesn't scream they as much. They changed a little bit, yeah. Uh, I, I'd probably avoid that. Uh, we haven't really maxed out. I was really impressed by the Ridgeline, but we haven't really maxed it out. So I'd like to see, I think the not recently, is like 5,000 or yeah, 6, right? So we, five. you really can't tell a 3,000, you know, you got to really, you got to really push it up a hill and at full. So I, I can't really speak to it. It just feels solid and, and stable. And it's a truck that most people don't think about. Yeah. Uh, I'm not in love with the Tacoma towing. Um, yeah, once again, not a lot of great shifting. Yeah. I mean, it, and it's kind of also a scream of an engine, the, the engine that likes to rev and not a lot of great shifting on the way down. I like I like the Ranger. I think you're right. The Ranger does a great job. I think if we were if we were going to pick Colorado, I'd go with that little Duramax, the baby Duramax once again. But not a ZR2. But not a, a ZR2. standard Colorado. Yeah, yeah don't right. go with the ZR2. Yeah. Because the ZR2, first of all, the grill has changed. We talked about mm-hmm. how important cooling, cooling, cooling is. Cooling is, yeah. So the grill has changed, so it, it's rated lower. And keep towing. away from the Bison, <laughs> <laughs> which is even worse. <laughs> it's heavier. The Bison is heavier. I know. Right? Yeah. The more stuff you put on it, yeah. the less it tows. Yeah. yeah. So so I think those are conclusions. And actually, the Frontier's a pretty good tow rig, too. Yeah, it was pretty stable. You and I towed yeah. with it. Uh, we towed the boat in uh, Utah. Yeah. Um, it was a really stable, good truck. Mm. 
Um, but uh, so they added a little thirsty. Mode. A little thirsty. They added a toehold mode, but did not add the brake controller. Yeah. I mean, they went like ninety five percent there, and then anyway. So you know, that, you know, that was my. You, you know what the scoop is? I think Andre, for me at least, like if you have a sports car, right? Um, you want a spoiler because it it says you have it, it kind of goes with the the territory or a air intake or something. And it's functional, right? Fu functional. It's functional. It looks cool. It looks cool. I think a truck with a brake controller says it's a truck. I think even more so than a sports car without a spoiler, a truck without a brake controller says, well, well, it may not, the brake controller may not make it more trucky. The lack of it makes it less trucky for sure and less functional because let's face it, if you have to go get like we have one of those, you know, aftermarket. It uh, hangs down. It hangs right? down. You have to mount to get to figure out where to put it. Yeah. It's, it's just a pain in the butt. Uh, and, and what you're doing is you're limiting people to basically 3,000 pounds when the truck's ability is like five or 6,000 pounds because without that, unless you have a surge brake, of course, but mm -hmm. without, without the brake controller, you do not want to tow a 6,000 pound trailer just relying on the truck's brakes. I mean, it's dangerous, it's illegal, uh, and it's uh, terrifying. Yes. Well, there you have it. So part two coming yeah, soon. soon. Coming soon, yeah, we'll continue this conversation. It was fun. Thank Very you, Jay. Cool. No problem. Yeah, see you guys next Went time. And remember, if you miss our videos, alltfl.com, it's all there. Uh, I keep answering comments saying, hey, the, the people keep suggesting stuff that we've done. Yeah, why don't you talk about the new Tacoma <laughs> updates? And I'm like, we've, we've done that. Yeah, somebody said that. What about the Altfl.com. Yeah, because that's, that's breaking news and that lives on now. And and if you're wondering why we don't just put everything on one channel, because it would just kill you guys. You, you wouldn't. <laughs> the amount of videos and news we put out, yeah. we work really hard. It would well, that's why we have eight channels, but one-stop shopping is Altfl.com. Yeah, I'll, I'll believe in choice. All right, see ya. Thanks, Andre. Thanks, Jake.